I love the music. <laughs> Come on, that's the intro music. Hey, Andrew, you look different today. I do. I'm much more feminine today. You're much more feminine. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We got Matt's back, and I'm so happy to have her back. Uh, again, this is uh, Talking Food with Chef Carlo, and today I have Matt. Yay. Happy Hold here. the applause, people in the background. But <laughs> it's okay. I'm very happy to have Matt's. We started the show with Matt's. And not that Andrea is not the best, but I like her. She's better looking than Andrew. <laughs> Shh, don't tell him that. Don't tell him that. He's some hiding somewhere in the back. So today, talking food, we keep talking about pasta. And let me catch you up with some of the things we spoke about last week. A lot of pasta. Mm, pasta. But bechamel, uh, we, we spoke about bechamel a lot. Mm -hmm. And I love bechamel because it's basically thickened milk. They let cook. And, uh, and I remember Andy was getting all like, yeah, like the one we made on the uh, video for, for the vignette. It's like, yes. And uh, it, we spoke about uh, getting a quart of milk, four ounces of roux, which is an equal mm -hmm. mixture of flour and, and butter. And uh, that will thicken the sauce. Put a onion pique, like, and, uh, like Andrew said, onion pique, which is an onion started with a clove and a bay leaf. Let it cook for 45 minutes, strain. And that is a base for a lot of things. It is so versatile that yesterday I was teaching my students how to make uh, biscuits and I took just a bunch of ground meat and I put it into bechamel and I make my own gravy for the biscuits. Mm. They were like, Chef Carlo, that was good. <laughs> I bet. But again, bechamel and I mean, creamy sauces, they go so well with pasta. And, uh, but now not all creamy sauces have to, not all sauces have to have a cream base or a milk base like Alfredo. Mm -hmm. We spoke about Alfredo the other day that we have the bad habit of making Alfredo. Uh, I don't want to say we, but I've seen a lot of Alfredo made with just heavy cream that is put to heat up. They add a bunch of Parmesan cheese so it thickens, and that is mixed with, uh, with the pasta. Can get a little gloppy. Not bad. It's not bad. It's yeah. not bad at all. But, ooh, look at that. Mmm. But I've, that looks yummy. I know, but Alfredo really is... You cook pasta, mm -hmm. make it really al dente, cook it like really undercook it, put it in a bowl, or I love to do it in a saute pan that is kind of hot, and then keep tossing the pasta with the Parmesan cheese and the butter. Uh -huh. Well, first, a lot of butter. And you keep tossing it, tossing it, tossing it, and you add a little bit of the water from the, from the cooking uh, liquid of the pasta, and you just keep tossing the pasta, and it creates kind of like an emulsion sauce buttery deliciousness and then of course top it up with a lot of parsley i love parsley on, on my alfredo and then make it nice like this beautiful thing that wa was back there and uh and that is my favorite way of making alfredo and that's so no cream because the the po uh, the starch from the pasta makes it creamy the starch Even from the pasta cream. make it creamy the water okay. from the pasta make it creamy the action of tossing the pasta on itself mm -hmm. with water from the cooking uh, from the cooking element from the cooking pasta makes it all creamy but what makes it creamier is that tossing movement that uh. it's like if it's like if you were tossing a salad mm -hmm. it would release starch from the pasta you're using the water the, from the the cooking water from the pasta which has a bunch of starch in there and of course the butter so you are basically creating an emulsion on your okay. bowl or your uh, or your um, or your saute pan, which basically, if you look at heavy cream, heavy cream is an emulsion. It's just basically mm -hmm. fat that has been yeah. homogenized, and it's a shortcut. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, am I gonna chastise you if you use heavy cream to make your alfredo? No, but why bother? I like to yeah. make mine with butter. That's okay. that's all I'm saying. Now. Moving again into other sauces, which one is your favorite pasta that you were talking before in the show? Carbonara. Carbonara. how can you go wrong with bacon and pasta? But remember, bacon fixes everything. Yes. Anything goes wrong. Bacon is the duct tape of the kitchen. <laughs> something tastes bad, a bacon. <laughs> you want something to taste amazing? Start it with bacon. Uh, you want to enhance something? Add bacon. Is it a cheap way to do things? No, I love bacon. Now, carbonara is a really interesting pasta because it's, it doesn't have a sauce per se. It gets mm -hmm. thickened with raw eggs. Mm -hmm. are, you, are we gonna eat raw eggs? 
Absolutely. Yes, nobody has died yet out of eating. I mean, lately in the, the past 20 years that I've been cooking. No, it's more like Well, and if you're really paranoid, can't you wash the eggshell off before you open the egg? Just eat the pasta. <laughs> okay, no, I mean, carbonara is not really raw eggs. Carbonara is a beautiful mixture of bacon. And what else? Let's see if you remember. Bacon, the pasta. We use some onion in ours. Yes. And Parmesan cheese. Yes. And uh, the eggs or and or some cream sometimes. Let's see how you make yours. Describe oh, it from the beginning. You just you throw the pasta on the, on the spot. No, you got me on the spot no, because no my spot. husband <laughs> cooks. <laughs> my husband does all the cooking. It's okay. So, okay, I'll tell you back in the day because I used to make the carbonara. Back in the memory day? Memory without a recipe. But I cook the pasta al dente, then drain it, put it back in the pot, add the eggs so the pot's still a little warm so it cooks them a mm. little bit. Add a little bit of cream and if, if it needs some <sighs> loosening up because I didn't know about the pasta water thing back then. I didn't she, know. Uh, Save the pasta just, water. No. A little bit of pasta water if it gets too. But that was a long that. time ago you did this, yes. right? Okay, good, good, good. Very long time ago. Okay, keep talking. And then the bacon and the onion. And okay, fine. Now I'm just drooling and I'm hungry and I want carbonara. Uh, you know, that's the only problem. <laughs> it's like Tuesday morning. It's bacon and eggs. It's breakfast. And pasta. It's like having tater tots and, and the eggs and bacon and then, but wait a minute, we can make it Italian style. Throw some pasta in there instead of, instead of, instead of, instead of tater tots. So what's the right way to make carbonara? Hopefully I won't have people go like, oh no, that's not the right way. Well, this is the way I learned. This is the way I've done it for, for the longest. Uh, of course, as you, pasta takes about, uh, my, my favorite one is make bucatini, which is a pasta with a little hole in the center. Uh -huh. I just love that one. I can eat that for breakfast. We can make carbonara for breakfast. If you think this about it, it has I'm bacon, saying. eggs, and starch. Yeah. Why not having carbonara for breakfast? So I start, I start sauteing my onions. Mm -hmm. um, no, let me take that back. Sorry. I render the fat from the bacon. So if the recipe calls for eight ounces of bacon, I use 12 ounces of bacon <laughs> because I can. Yes. Because it's delicious. So I take my bacon. I don't like to mince it too thin. Mm -hmm. I like to leave it chunky. Okay. But you don't want it too big too. Right. So I kind of dice it, put it in, the, in my pot, and slow, medium heat, start rendering the fat. And rendering means you're going to heat up any kind of fat. It could be uh, dog fat, beef fat, uh, bacon fat, uh, swine fat, which is the best, and slowly cook it. As it slowly cooks, the fat, the fat chunks or the bacon is going to render the fat. And you're going to use that fat then to cook your onions. So when your bacon is nice and crispy, it depends. Some people like non-crispy bacon. Yeah. I don't like bacon when it's too crispy. Oh, well, I don't want it to be crunchy, but... Well, it depends. See, if I'm making a BLT, mm -hmm. I like my bacon crunchy. Okay. That, uh, with lots of mayonnaise, like pile up the tomato, lettuce, and toasty bread. Yes, that, I like my, my, uh, my bacon crunchy. When I'm eating it with eggs, for some reason, I like it like halfway cooked. Okay. To each his own. And thank you. And uh, <laughs> so I cook my bacon halfway, and then uh, that's the way I like it. If somebody mm -hmm. asks, oh, I want my crispy. Fine, we'll cook it crispy. Then I remove the bacon from the pan, and mm -hmm. I add my onions. Now, don't increase the heat because otherwise the onions are going to turn brown and burn. The whole point here is to cook the onion halfway so it loses a lot of the crunch, but not to get a lot of color on the onion. Stir your onions in there. Meanwhile, your pasta should be co uh, cooking in, in hot boiling water. It takes eight minutes to pass it to, before pasta to be at dente. So if you're making bucatini, it takes about 12 minutes to be cooked. At eight minutes, I pull it out of the water. So I start my bacon, and then I add my onions, remove the, uh, remove the bacon, put the onions in, mm -hmm. start cooking the onions. While the onions are cooked, my pa in eight minutes, my onions are going to be cooked, my pasta is going to be cooked. I add the pasta into the pot, add the bacon, and then you add the eggs. Now, here is a trick. Kill the heat on the burner, because the pasta is going to be hot, the pot's going to be hot, the onions are going to be hot. I want your eggs to be cold. What's going to happen is, if the, the eggs are at room temperature with all this hotness, they're going to oh, scramble okay. right, instead, of, they're gonna, instead of cooking slowly. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the eggs into the pasta and stir, 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 stir. 
almost like making your, um, what we spoke about? Alfredo. Thank you. <laughs> almost like making your, your Alfredo, and you're going to just stir, stir your pasta. So what's going to happen, the eggs are going to coat all the pasta and s cook really slowly, and they're going to thicken your pasta. Now, don't cook it all the way. So yes, it's kind of you're eating half raw eggs, but if you eat sunny side up eggs, same thing. Yeah. That's 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 when I get people like you like raw, uh, sunny side up eggs. I love sunny side up eggs. They're halfway cooked eggs because the right. egg yolk is still raw. So mm, there you <laughs> go. Oh, I didn't know you used to do that. Well, see, you got seeds, so you're going to be okay. So you toss, 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 toss. And if you start seeing little chunks of white, that means your eggs are getting cooked too fast. So slow it down, set it on the side. Now, if it's not getting thick, it means you need heat. So turn on the burner mm. halfway into hot and keep stirring your pasta. It's really hard to make carbonara at the restaurant because you need to know, you need to have somebody that is what they, they know what they're doing. Sure. But if you, if you train your staff properly, and uh, the carbonara is going to be, your, I mean, bacon, eggs, parmesan cheese, and then the, make, make it rain with parmesan cheese. Like, make it rain. You can take actually the, uh, you, you, can, you can take uh, the, the plano grater and go like, shh, <laughs> and you'll make it rain parmesan cheese on top of your carbonara. And that's it. Nest it up, serve great glass of red wine will go fantastic with your carbonara. And parsley, I like parsley on my carbonara. I like parsley on everything. Touch of brightness at the end. Yeah, people go <laughs> like, oh, parsley, that's a peasants. That's the peasants, <laughs> uh, I'm like, eh, it, 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 Arab, it's, it's okay. I'm okay with, uh, with, par with parsley on anything. So is that how, you, uh, how your husband make your carbonara? Probably, but um, I just, sit in the living room and paint while he cooks. And I'm very lucky. Wow. <laughs> he cooks dinner every night. It's always mm. wonderful, too. I wonder is why that, uh, hmm. So if I didn't cook, huh, OK. Uh-oh. No. Mm. I wouldn't be as interesting if I didn't cook, yeah. wasn't I? Oh, Not okay. true. OK, now, bacon and pasta. Bacon and pasta. Because, I mean, you can even have, like, just bacon and pasta <laughs> and, and just take the bacon fat and there's nothing wrong with this uh render your bacon mm -hmm. bacon is nice and crispy cook your pasta al dente add it inside of the uh under the uh, where you're cooking the bacon and just keep tossing the fat from the bacon is going to coat the pasta and of course you're going to have the collateral effect of cooked bacon right which is not bad and then just keep tossing it, keep tossing it. I will add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. The Parmesan cheese, what's going to do is suck up a little bit of the fat. <laughs> cheese, <laughs> and soaking cheese. up fat. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, can eat this every day. <laughs> it's good. And I would use, I would use a short pasta like a rotini uh -huh. or, a, or a radiatori that has ripples. So I can pick up the bacon fat and the Parmesan cheese. Oh my goodness. And, and that's it. I mean, you don't have much in your fridge. Render some bacon, toss it into pasta, Parmesan cheese. Yum. Ta -ta -ra -ra. Now, so are there more um, pasta and bacon recipes? I can come up with 200 of them. Oh, I okay. Mean, they, I mean, be creative. The, the, the beautiful thing about pasta is pasta is like a canvas. Uh, start with it, it's like Asian noodles or white rice it's, it's just a canvas add anything you want just make sure that it's tasteful mm -hmm. don't add Nutella on pasta no I want to know no 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 I don't want to know that Nutella and pasta Ugh. Uh, three o'clock in the morning sounds like a great idea but I don't know I don't know we, we need we need to re revise that one but pasta it, it, it's a canvas it's a canvas that you can express your originality, you can express, and uh, you can express what you feel, uh, the way you cook. Uh, I mean, you want to go crazy? Uh, add chili to your pasta. Okay. They do that up in uh, Minnesota. They sure. love they love to make their chili and they put it on top of pasta. At the beginning, I was like, ah, my heart breaks. But then you know what? The beauty of, of American cuisine. You can take everything and just melt it. And you know what? If you like chili and you like pasta, why not? And you're willing to pay for it at the restaurant. <laughs> Why not? Is the heater on again? 
It's like in my office. We have like, it's 45 degrees out there. Let's turn on the heater. It's like, no, open the windows. <laughs> now, pasta can be dressed very easily. One of my favorites from the area of Rome is cacio and pepe. Okay. It's just cheese and pepper. Okay. But <laughs> it's just cheese and pepper. But uh, it, the reason it took that name is because mm -hmm. it's made with the cacio cavallo. Uh, cheese, which is a really hard cheese made out of horse's milk. Okay. No, oh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> it's a really hard cheese. Uh, I think we lost. <laughs> it's a really hard cheese. It's like you're not getting that in the U.S. <laughs> uh, no, no, not gonna happen here. But it's but <laughs> cacio cavallo. It's with a cacio cheese. It's a really hard cheese from the center of Italy. Now we can use the. Um, you can use just Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. Now, look at this beauty. Just cook the pasta, boil it, put them in a bowl. Why not add some butter? I mean, you can add olive oil. Butter makes it better. Hashtag clarify butter. Hashtag clarify butter. We still need to work. We still need to work on the on the sound effects on clarify butter. <laughs> we will get the budget one day to get that. So. Uh, that look looks at, delicious. Look it's at, so simple, but... Look at this. And it's just yeah. hot pasta, tossed with Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. and a bunch of cracked pepper. That's it. Uh, delicious. I mean, delicious. Now, I like to add... I, I like mine with olive oil, because uh, you got to have some kind of fat. It's great when it just cooks, but when you add olive oil or butter, it mm -hmm. coats the noodles, and it will grasp on the Parmesan cheese or the Cacio Cavallo yes. cheese better. Okay. Now you have the choice of using really fine grated uh, Parmesan cheese or really fine grated Cacio Cavallo. Mm -hmm. I actually use a combination of two of them. Okay. As soon as it comes out of, uh, out of the uh, boiling water into the saute pan or your bowl, I, I use really fine grated Parmesan cheese and then I add Cacio Cavallo because you got to stretch it out a little, bit, a little bit. It's like 17 bucks oh, a pound. Oh, so okay. Mm, yeah, it's expensive. I, I, I kind of like stretch it out a little bit. And just toss. That's it. Okay. It's just cheese and pepper. Can you go crazy and use any other cheese? Why not? Yeah, why not? Just make sure that you use, uh, don't use a cheese that melts, like mozzarella, because mm -hmm. then it's going to clump up. Right. You have to use a hard, dry cheese. Romano. You, uh, Romano, uh, pecorino romano, you can use that one. You can use parmigiano cheese. You can use, uh, I really like old uh, cheddar, something that has been, something that has been right. aged. So it's like, uh, like here in North Carolina, we get that Botscar cheese, the cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, perfect. And uh, Botscar, they're just right out of uh, uh, north of Ashboro, and they do a fantastic uh, aged cheddar. It's almost, it almost looks like Parmesan cheese and it can be grated. It's uh -huh. really good. Okay, cool. So when you do that, uh, if you use mozzarella, it's just going to get like gooey and it's not gonna be big right. to right. toss it. You have to have that the beautiful, the drier the cheese, the better. Can you okay. use Gruyere? Mm, only if it is a really aged Gruyere, that you, something that you can grate. Okay. When you grate, and when you grate, it's gonna be some kind of dry, because you can still right. grate mozzarella. Sure. But something that doesn't melt that easily. Okay. That's Cacio Cavallo. That's the original. And then you can name it anything you want. It's cool. easy. Sounds delicious. The, that's something you should tell your husband to make. Okay. Matt's just like, my husband will make that for me. It's like, oh, yeah. that's okay. Anything I ask, to ask him to cook. That's great. I'm, I'm happy for you. <laughs> now, <laughs> bacon and pasta. Bacon and pasta. A matriciana. Back to bacon. A matriciana. A matriciana. A matriciana. It comes from the area of Rome. Okay. Now, in, uh, in Rome, they don't use bacon. They use guanciale, which is mm -hmm. wild boar. So they make bacon with wild boar, and okay. then they add it to the pasta. All right. But where are the fireworks? Wow! <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> Wait, sound, we need to get the budget for the sound, sound effects. Like, right. ah. Wild boar. <laughs> Yes, and now okay. it's it's really uh, boar is uh, wild boar is really flavorful. Uh, it has that game 
to taste. Okay. Uh, really hard to get over here. You can still get guanciale. You still have to um, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Sure. So what do we use? <laughs> bacon. bacon. <laughs> locally, locally sourced and produced bacon will do fine. Uh, I mean, we're going to miss all the flavor of the wild boar that has been cured and aged and, and turned into bacon, but... Do what you can. We do what we can with what <laughs> we have. Now, Amatriciana. So it starts with the bacon, and again, Bucatini, my favorite pasta to make. Okay. Oh, come on. Hold on. Chelsea, how you doing? Add green onion to that bacon pasta. Yeah, why not? Yeah. And Andrew still likes me. That's good. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, Chelsea. Nice, nice to see you. Uh, Amatriciana. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I write down stuff because I cannot remember everything. So Amatriciana is, you use your guanciale. Mm -hmm. If you don't have guanciale, it's fine. Uh, you can use Italian pancetta. That is widely available. Italian pancetta is the stomach of, uh, it's your American bacon that has been uh, rubbed, cured, mm -hmm. and then before it's smoked, they're gonna roll it and they make okay. like a right. sure. big circle of delicious <laughs> bacon fat. And, and it gets cured and then it gets sliced. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's sliced so thin that you can just eat it on top of bread and make a sandwich with yeah. it nothing. Are you eating raw bacon? Yes. <laughs> well, but it's cured, right? So it's, it's, there you go, it's cured. Yes, I love it. Okay. It's cured. <laughs> there you go. It's not raw bacon. It's cured. Don't worry. We're the good stuff. So the beautiful thing about the uh, the Matri channel, look how simple it is. So it's basically it's basically tomatoes that we have seasoned with bacon. Okay. Sounds delicious. It sounds delicious. Yeah. So render your bacon fat. Uh -huh. uh, render your bacon. Get your bacon fat. Remove the bacon. Add your tomatoes. Uh, in this case, uh, when we were talking about, about it that last week, is I like to use canned tomatoes. Okay. Canned tomatoes, they are always, uh, uh, canned tomatoes are always uh, consistent. Right. They are mm -hmm. canned ripe. Uh, they are steamed so they can remove the skin. So much, uh, most canned tomatoes won't have a skin. And I use those because they're, cons they're consistent. Consistent quality. Mm -hmm. You can dice them in big chunks. So then with your, with your, um, with your bacon fat, I add just a little bit of garlic. Well, can't go wrong with garlic either. I know, but uh -huh. see the misconception that Italian cooking, it's like, ah, oh, you're making Italian, they add the, the garlic. No, oh, you don't have to no, add no. Well, you don't have to add that much garlic. It's okay. just a little bit of garlic to like, give it a little, mm -hmm. a little mm, perfume. Mm -hmm. And then cook your tomatoes. Uh, depending on where you are, you can add red pepper flakes. Okay. Now, if I was using a lot of pepper flakes, I will first render my tomatoes, uh, my, my bacon, and then add my red pepper flakes to the fat. Bloom them. Yes, because what happens, fat really, there's a lot of spices that are fat soluble. Mm -hmm. Like uh, curry if, uh, paprika, they really go well into the food better if they're first dissolved in fat. Okay. I believe my red chili flakes, they get a better flavor if I just put them into the uh, bacon fat and then let them sit there for a couple of seconds. So they, and you can, as soon as they hit, they hit the bacon fat, you can smell them. Uh. And then, can you use morcia? Oh my God, Lawrence, you have to like, you have to spell better, morcia. <laughs> morcia, I believe it's a blood sausage. Yeah, you can use blood sausage. I'll get that in a moment. Uh, Chelsea, green onion, bacon, yeah, morcilla. Morcilla, I'll let you know in a moment now, morcilla. Uh, then add your uh, red chili flakes, uh -huh. and then cook your tomatoes. Now, you don't want to cook them too long, not too late. You're okay. just bringing the tomatoes up to temperature. Okay. Cook them fast, mm -hmm. cook, wild and fast. Cook them fast, and then, of course, you have your bocatini there cooking al dente. Put them in your bowl. Get a little bit of tomato sauce just to get them red. Uh -huh. And then once your matrichan is ready, return the bacon to the tomatoes, heat up, and put it right on, put the, on top of the tomatoes or uh, the pasta, and then make the parmesan cheese rain. Let it be Ooh. rain of parmesan cheese, yay! <laughs> now, crazy comment. Uh, Lawrence asked if we can use morcilla. Morcilla is blood sausage. 
Now, there's different blood sausages, and they're made differently depending on which country you come from. My favorite okay. blood sausage is from Argentina because they put no fillers. They don't put all rice. They don't put, you're like, what? Blood sausage? Do you yeah, I'm blood just sausage? nodding and smiling. You're like, he's gone crazy. No. <laughs> he's gone crazy. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, blood, I love blood sausage. It's actually blood. I know what it <laughs> Are you is. Are about to puke? No. Okay, good. That Just is not going to try it. <laughs> oh, challenge accepted. <laughs> challenge accepted. We might have a morcilla tasting the next time you come. Yes. And. Uh, <laughs> so Argentina. Yeah. Oh, they have the best because they use not a lot of fillers, so it's just uh -huh. pure blood in a sausage case. And so when you cook it, it kind of starts snapping. When you cut it, it's like creamy. It's like cream cheese, but made out of like blood. It's delicious. And you can actually, I, <laughs> she's about mm -hmm. to regurgitate. Toasted bread and morcilla, all the blood sausage. Mm. I bet you can take that morcilla and just toss it with some fresh cooked pasta and make it creamy. It will be like a black pasta. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will do it. <laughs> we will do it. Next time she comes around, we're making blood sausage pasta. It's, and we won't tell her about it. <laughs> yes, breathe. Actually, we're going to take a break now because uh, I brought some fresh pasta. Yeah, you have to say yes. Yes. Whoa. I'm waiting for the rest. Awesome. I'm going to mix. Uh, I brought some fresh pasta. I brought my very simple pasta machine. I'm going to show you how to make pasta, uh, how to shape a couple of shapes of, of pasta. And I'm going to show you how simple it is to make pasta at home or even at the restaurant. Uh, and we'll play with it. Uh, fire code. <laughs> they don't like us to cook inside here. Otherwise, we will be cooking a bunch of stuff. But the fan marshal don't like it. Okay. So we need to find a way to bypass that one. So uh, we're going to go for a quick break. And when we we're back, we're going to play with a little bit of noodles. Awesome. Awesome. So hang around tight. <laughs> Join Nash Community College Saturday, April 29th for the second annual Blue Fest. This day-long event includes the third annual Run for Knowledge, an inaugural disc golf tournament, and fun-filled events on Nash Community College's beautiful campus, including music, food, electric line pole climb, craft beer and gourmet pizza sampling, hands-on activities, and more. See demonstrations of advanced manufacturing, beekeeping, first responders, culinary arts. Join us April 29th for a celebration of education and free family fun. We did it water, we did it woo. We did it water woo. Hello, my name is Stuart the Nighthawk Hawkins. And I'm a DJ here at Nash Community College's Big Bang Radio. So tune in Mondays and Thursdays from 8 to 10 for the wind down. Smooth jazz geared to help you relax from your busy day. Did you know Nash Community College offers 12 degree programs entirely online? Are you interested in information technology? Explore information technology systems, network management, system security, healthcare informatics or web design and administration. These two year programs are only a few of the online associate degrees offered through Nash Online. Students receive the same quality instruction and resources as on campus students without ever stepping foot on Nash's campus. Learn more about Nash Online today at online.nashcc.edu. And we are back. And we're standing. And look at this bounty of things that we have here. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you is, this is my trusty pasta machine. Anybody can make pasta. Yes, it's a little dusty and flowery because I used it a moment ago because I had to like make some pasta. So it's like, it's okay. But here's the, here's the thing. This is your Italian made uh, pasta machine. It's very simple. Uh, I, I guess every single household 
and it Italy has one of these. Uh, and some restaurants do too. I used to work in an Italian restaurant. They used to make pasta for everybody in this thing. Just Not like, like that. a giant one? No. Just a wee one? Yep. Okay. I know. Because the big giant one is like $2,000. Ah, I see. This one is 50 bucks. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I like my mind. I like the Italian made one because it's made out of steel. And check out the heaviness in that thing. Oh, yeah. It's quite heavy. And it's all made, and it's all steel and metal. I don't like the ones that have plastic. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no. no. I actually bought one. It was like $25. I'm like, really? $25? I bought it. And all the gears inside were made out of, were made out of plastic. No. Just breaks. Just spend uh, it, the extra 25 to get one that'll last. Spend the, the extra 25 Now there are some people on eBay that they go like, oh, okay, uh, we have, uh, I found this one on eBay for 13 bucks. I'm like, mm, be careful because people don't know how to take care of these things. I have seen people submerge in water. And when you mm -hmm. submerge in water, it just becomes a door stopper. Because the rust will get in the door. It doors. rusts everything. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, now it's good for a door stopper. It doesn't, it's not good for anything else. But it's a very simple construction. And the top part, you can use it just like this to just get your dough nice and straight. Or you can use, uh, they all come with the top part. This one is to make tagliatelle, or how we call it, fettuccine here. And this is to make spaghetti. It won't make your round spaghetti, because the round spaghetti is made when you take a, um, a uh, extruder. Thank you. Oh my god, I'm so glad you're here because my memory sometimes is like, yikes. So the, you can get that nice round shape through an mm -hmm. extruder. In this one, you get square spaghetti. Square spaghetti is almost spaghetti a la guitarra. I love how they come here. And look, it's very simple. It slides right over here. Done. Ah. Now, when you buy it, it comes with a really small clamp. OK. <laughs> I, I upgraded it. <laughs> here you go. You can see this. I upgraded it. I went to Home Depot. Uh, no, wait, we're in uh, Lowe's, okay. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Back in Florida, it was all uh, Home Depot. Here ah. it's Lowe's. So I went to the Lowe's, I got this bad boy. So I upgraded my clamp. So it's like, yeah, it will grab it. And it's very simple as just like, and you want to clamp it down because what's going to happen as you work your dough, it's, if you don't have it clamped down, this mm -hmm. machine is going to fly everywhere. Okay. And what happens when stuff flies everywhere? It gets on the floor and then you can't eat it. And you can't eat it. <laughs> and then you get frustrated and then you end up having your bourbon and no pasta. Uh. <laughs> no, you need to have wine. Wine gets you mellow and happy. And it's like, yes, pizza cutter, my favorite mm -hmm. tool to cut pasta. We have okay. the small version. Sure. I know. <laughs> this it makes a nice musical instrument. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, see, I'm not musically inclined, but. You can do better than me on that one. You're an artist. Now, I made some pre-pasta uh, ahead. And this is something I even tell my students to memorize. Pound of flour, five eggs, uh -huh. pinch of salt, okay. teaspoon of, uh, of oil. Mix okay. it. And you get this beautiful thing. OK, like Play-Doh. It is Play-Doh, but it's delicious Play-Doh. Yeah. Gluten is nice to develop. So this one, I made it yesterday. I like to, my, for my pasta to rest so the gluten can really be rested. Mm -hmm. If you don't let your pasta rest, as you stretch it like that, it will just, you see mm -hmm. how it pulls yeah. back? Yeah. That's the gluten right there working. Okay. That is the plastic, uh, what I call the plastic ability of the gluten, plastic elastic. That's what gives it a bite. Okay. That's what gives a bite to pizza dough, gluten. And I know gluten is bad, and so a lot of people are Only going gluten-free. I am gluten sensitive, but I still eat it. It's delicious. <laughs> so just to give you a quick, actually, you will do this. OK. Uh, come on. Sure. Look, it has dials here. I'm not here. for anything. I know. We're going to put it on. I don't have my glasses. What it says there? One. One. Look how simple it is to make this. A little bit of flour. Dun, 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 dun. Are you right or right or lefty? Right. Okay. So this one goes in here. It's on one. Yeah. I'll be your co-pilot. Move okay. to the left. Okay. Roll it. Grab it from the bottom. Ta -ta -ta. Ta -da. This Ta -da. is not pasta yet. Not yet. I mean, it's the beginnings of pasta. <laughs> okay. So let's going to take it to number three. Roll the next one. Flap it to this side. 
Roll it. Ta 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 ta. And now we move it to number five. Roll it. Slap it on this side. Wow, hit a quick learner. Now, if it doesn't get sticky, like if you see it and it starts sticking to the rolling uh -huh. pins, then you flower it. Otherwise, okay. we're going to go for the last roll, which is on number, is that that's it, five or six? Six. All right, good. Pinch it over there, flap it over here, let it roll. Look at that. Look at there. You're a pro. Oh, yeah, that would definitely be wobbling all over the place if it weren't oh, yeah. clamped down. And that's it. You have made pasta. Woo! Wait, but it's I'm not, not going to eat that. I know, but <laughs> let's see. If you want to make lasagna, uh -huh. you just cut it like this. Uh-huh. And you can start building your sheets for lasagna. Uh-huh. So some people will cook it and make your lasagna. I just, what I make is I, I make a nice bechamel and I make it really mm -hmm. liquid and I build my pasta with raw sheets of, of pasta, uh, my lasagna with raw sheets of pasta. So I skip that step of boiling it and just put it in the oven and it comes out delicious. Now, let me show you right there a couple of cool tricks that you can make pasta. No, you, you're fine. Okay. You're fine now. Okay. I want you to cut it. Take the pizza cutter. Uh -huh. I want you to cut it that thick. Cut a bunch of them. A bunch of them? Yeah, make them thicker. Thicker? I'll make it thicker. Uh, don't be afraid. <laughs> okay. We. Oui. What's that? I don't know. You tell me. Those are called pappardelle. Pappardelle. Yes, it's one of my That's favorite pasta. Okay. It's nice okay. and thick. Mm -hmm. It's nice and thick. Look at that. Uh-huh. So it's about a three quarters of an inch thick. And uh, they cook. And now fresh pasta cooks in two minutes. That's it. Don't let it cook too long, the two minutes. And it's really hard to take um, fresh pasta to al dente. Fresh pasta is not going to mm -hmm. cook al dente because it's fresh. But two minutes will do the trick. Now, what you can do is you can dry your fresh pasta. Okay. Look what I have here. This is something I made last night. And I, ru I run it oh. through the small, through the small uh, fettuccine. And now I let it dry. Once it dries, now you can cook this pasta al dente. Then can you store it in like an airtight container? You can store it in an airtight container. It'll last forever. Okay, cool. Not forever because we But you want to just way. make sure it's plenty dry first. I know. Yes. Now, let me show you how to make a couple of different shapes with uh, your fresh pasta. Okay. Use this and cut it. Start it right here. Uh-huh. Okay. And now cut it about that thick. Looks like the old-fashioned lasagna things. Oh, now you have old-fashioned lasagna ribbons, but I'm going to show you one thing what happens. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. There you go, right Oop, there. I now, uh -oh. check this out. Now, with the plain dough, cut it right uh -huh. here. And now... <gasps> Bow ties. <laughs> what are they called? Bow ties. Okay. Farfalle. Farfalle. So now you squeeze it like that. Of course, there's a machine okay. that do this. Look at that. Bow ties. And just squeeze it in the center. See that? Whee. And they're Bow ready. Tie. Bow ties. And <laughs> yeah, and uh, you can go as thick or as thin as you want. But mm -hmm. here's the trick. You just bring it, squeeze it, and you can even give it an extra fold in there. See, my mom will be, will be beating me on this Bow one. Tie. Bow ties. And then this pasta, before you cook it, you need to let it sit for about five minutes so the shape mm -hmm. kind of like dries up a oh, little so bit. Oh, so it doesn't just go. go. Yeah, uh, if okay. you cook it right now, it will just disintegrate. It will mm -hmm. just turn into this. Okay. Which is not bad, but we want to keep the, uh, the, the farfalle or the bow tie uh, shape. It is. So uh, before you cook it, let us sit about five minutes mm -hmm. and then cook it so we keep the shape. Now, see how easy was that? Uh-huh, that was easy. What else do you want to make? You don't. You're the boss, you tell me. I'm the boss, I'm not the boss. So now grab this one, just like this. Okay. And you're gonna roll it like this, back and forth. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Just roll it back and forth. Start? Okay, mine won't start. 
it won't start. Oh, okay, there we go. There you go. And then you can get the other side <laughs> and you keep rolling it. And that's called a strozza preti, called the priest choker. Okay. That sounds weird, but that's the <laughs> translation. Now you can make it this long, which is my favorite. Uh -huh. Or guess what? You want it shorter? Chop. Chop. Okay. And those are called the strozza preti. Cool. Now would those still just cook in two minutes? Uh, they're kind of thick? Since, it, that's a great reservation. Since we made this a little bit thicker, mm -hmm. this will take about five minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, from fresh. If you're gonna let it dry like this, guys, then right. the regular eight minutes supply. Okay. But you have to be careful, because once, this one will cook in two minutes, mm -hmm. actually three, because now you make the center a little bit thicker now. Right. So this will cook fresh in about three minutes. And now the best way to tell when the pasta is ready is as you cook it. Nom nom. Try it. I mm. haven't heard anybody yet saying like, oh my God, I will not try the pasta cooking. It's like, um, yeah, it's you delicious. Could eat, uh, you could just eat it raw if you want. You can <laughs> eat it raw if you want. <laughs> now we got the bow ties. Mm -hmm. We got the strozza preti. Now. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it, I swear. With this thing, you can have a lot of fun. And now, this is traditional pasta shapes. Now, you can, the beautiful thing about people, and I tell them, make whatever you want. Have fun mm -hmm. with it. Uh, treat pasta like Play-Doh. What do you mean? Like, let's say, just grab this. You make your own. Okay. Make your own. Oh, yes, sir. You're too good. Oh, we could have used that one. I'm <laughs> Now, take this one and start rolling it. Mm -hmm. You can either do it by hand or you can do it here on the cutting board. And you can roll it, this is fusillo al ferro. And you can make a long one, just like the strozza preti, but the difference is this bad boy is hollow. It's hollow. So it's going to have a hole in the center. Cool. Yes, I know, right? <laughs> it's going to have a hole in the center. And that one's going to stay there. Uh, again, before I cook this one, I let it sit for about five minutes so mm -hmm. the shape can kind of like take place. Don't make them fresh and toss them in the, uh, in the water because then It'll just come apart again. They're going to come apart again. All your work But just not. let them sit okay. for about five minutes, mm -hmm. and then you're going to be fine. Okay, so we showed the fresh pasta. And now, sorry I went off camera for a moment. I'm going to show you how to make. Yeah. No, go okay. no, Hold on. That? Okay. It's okay. It's all, it's all good. That's a good thing about having pasta. Now. Switch. Switch. The switcheroo. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna teach you how to make gnocchetti sardi. Gnocchetti, gnocchi is a dumpling, which mm -hmm. it would be uh, made with potatoes. But a lot of times they're made with just pasta. So, gnocchetti sardi, they come from the island of Sardinia, and uh, we don't have the equipment to make it because they use a wooden, a, a, a piece of wood that has been carved, so it has a bunch of lines. Mm -hmm. But we'll just cheat. We'll just make gnocchetti. Now you can make this with uh, pasta. Uh, with pasta. Obviously. I'm making it with uh -huh. pasta. The <laughs> traditional way is with potatoes. You make, you take potatoes, you boil them, uh, and then you just beautiful roasted potatoes, really high in starch. Uh, then you add either flour or potato starch mm -hmm. and one egg, a couple of eggs. So people, no, no eggs on the gnocchi. I add eggs in my gnocchi, binds them. And you're gonna make a dough just like that one and you make them like this. Mm -hmm. See uh, the shape? Yeah. So try to do it with your finger here and just roll. And you can call this yeah. gnocchetti. Mm. There you go. Cool. Where's my bench scraper? Bench scraper. I put it over there. Bench scraper. Bench scraper. Bench scraper. And 
Now, if you had a fork, then you can roll them against the fork uh -huh. and it will give the nice shape the on the back. But okay. it, the easiest here is, is I don't want to use um, yeah. that much stuff because I'm showing you how easy it is to make these gnocchettis. You don't need to have a lot of fancy equipment. Right. And, and there are some restaurants that I work with that we just all make them by hand like that. Now, if you take this one, ooh, it's dry today. We didn't moisturize. <laughs> so, uh -huh. God, I can't remember the, this one. So you go first one with two fingers, and then on the other side, two fingers, and the other side, two fingers. Look at that. So without me destroying it. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were called casarechi. Now let's make some gemelli. We should have some like music in the back. <laughs> okay, this I love to make. It's really cool. So we use still the same piece of steel. So this I like to make about two inches long. Now, give me the piece of steel. So, come over here. Great move. Smack it right in the center. Press mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Hold it there. Then give it a half twist. That's it. Don't they look pretty? Yes. <laughs> look at that. That simple. Again, this guy's you let them sit for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you toss them right now in the water, mm -hmm. yeah. So I let them sit for about five minutes and then bake. Cook them. And thank you. Uh, my God, I'm trying to think. What would my mom do? My mom will do a lot of things. Actually, my first teacher was my mother because I would sit down with her while she was making pasta and and just help her make pasta, and it was really fun. It was really fun. Now, so you can take this bad boy now, and, oh wait, we haven't flattened already. What am I doing? We have the machine already made. Okay. And you can take that one right there. Mm -hmm. And just start from here. Mm -hmm. And start rolling them in the center. So it's almost like the fusilli al ferro, but it has this rhomboidal shape. shape. Now, I can know really I have a, probably have my mm -hmm. people in Rome right now. What time is it? Like in the afternoon, they're probably watching the show. It's like, that's not how we make it. That's too big. I'm like, I uh -huh. know. I'm making smaller. Okay. Try it again. Smaller one. Mm -hmm. And cavatelli. Cavatelli. Mm. Yours came out better than mine. Good for you. Yeah. Mine. It's drying out. It's hard to get it to. Yeah, you know <laughs> what? It's winter. That's why yeah. you have to keep your pasta cover because it will dry out quickly. So that's the. You're making better than me. Good for you. <laughs> you quick learn the grasshopper. <laughs> and those are cavatelli. Now, there's really cool machines that you can put just your roll of pasta in and make cavatelli mm -hmm. like that. But we're trying to make them all by hand. What else do you want to do? I don't know. You tell me. I tell you. you I, I tell, tell you. I tell you. I can't remember the name of this guy. Jeez, so, I got to use better Brainiac systems. So it's the same of the uh, Farfalle, but it's going to have a rhomboid shape. So you bring it down like that. And of course, those bad boys like also that? let them rest. Yes. Okay. 
it's just fold it in half and then fold those corners up. Yes. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to teach you how to make a ravioli, but that's a whole different planet. Because ravioli is stuffed pasta. Mm -hmm. we, that's dumpling, ravioli, mm -hmm. and uh, but that is a whole show. I want to have the the, the stuffing in there because we're we're in a different planet there. Sure. That's a, if, that's a whole be, other show. Are you going to be here next week? No, I can't. I'm can sorry. I, can I import you for next week? <laughs> Do I have to work with Andrew again next week? <laughs> you get to work with Andrew again oh, next okay. week. <laughs> I am that I am that lucky of a dog. I know, and then. You can, the beautiful thing is you can get so creative and hey, you want something smaller, uh, fine, just cut your pasta into smaller pappardelle and you can call this bad boy small pappardelle. Now, you wanna make some spaghetti? Sure. sure. Here, there's some pre-cut uh, sheets right there. Okay. Magical TV. Wee. Or oh, it's just TV. me getting here really early this morning. Now, you see how much flour I had to yeah. put between this? Okay, use that one. Now, you want to make uh, the fettuccine or the spaghetti? Spaghetti. Okay, so first of all, this bad boy has to go mm -hmm. here. And that one. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not going to go <laughs> anywhere. Okay. Now, you're righty, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I so I suggest, you, I suggest you roll with the right and, got, and drive with the left. Okay. So with your left hand, you're going to hold this one, mm -hmm. get it in there, push it in, and with your right one, you roll. Wait, what, what, signorina, what, what? aspetti un momento. One Pardon. sec. Just okay. lay it down like uh -huh. this, and with your fingers push ah. it. Don't worry, you're not going to get caught. It's okay. not going to grab your fingers. Just make sure you push it in so it can kind of like, there you go. Oh, okay. Uh, it is dry today. The pasta dry out quickly. And they're going to oh, fall down there. All. Now roll okay. with your right and grab with your left. Except I can't. But, okay. You can do it. You can do it. It's okay. Did it come out? It's stuck. I think it's, it's too dry. Stuck. No, it's too dry. And if one of my students used this pasta machine and didn't get it properly, haha. <laughs> that's how it feels like. It's a little <laughs> bit too dry. Okay. Let's try it again with I'll get one from in the middle here. Try it for one in the middle. Okay. Let's, here, let's cut it in half. Let's cut it in half to make it easier for you. And then let's give it a good... It's never mm -hmm. too bad to have a lot of flour in your pasta making. Because it's going to go into the water anyhow. Try that one. Okie doke. You can always blame it on the machine if it doesn't come out right. Ah. Ah. Ta -da. Ta -da -da. There you go. And I usually use this bad boy to send it through. Uh -huh. There you go. Now you made spaghetti. spaghetti. Hey, spaghetti quadrati. <laughs> here, Oops. toss them all over. We everywhere. don't have to clean here today. <laughs> we'll have Andrew's school cleaning. No. <laughs> okay, make some fettuccine. Yes, sir. First thing you need to do, change that one. Got pasta, it's been flour, roll it through. Roll with the right. It's okay. No, it's not okay, because okay. there you go. Look at that beautiful fettuccine. And these guys, they're gonna just dry it like the other ones we have there. And this one you can drop them straight on the hot water. And if you wanna dry up the pasta, it's very important. I see a lot of people that they mount the pasta. This is made with flour. Mm -hmm. So pasta that is made with uh, bread flour, uh, I like to just stretch it out. Don't mount it like this, because what's going to happen is the same way it's going to press the pasta, it's going to become a block. Mm -hmm. It's not good. So I like, if you were going to let it dry for the next day, just spread it out mm -hmm. on a sheet pan, flour, leave it in the air outside, and it will dry fine. Now, one thing I'm going to try today that I'm gonna have in, I haven't done in a while is bring the semolina pasta. Yay! So, semolina is durum wheat, and it's usually not used with eggs. Uh, down in Napoli, they use semolina, and uh, 
and water. That's it. Mm -hmm. The ratio is about one cup. It's uh, one pound of semolina flour, eight ounces of water. Okay. And they make this beautiful durum wheat pasta. We're getting a lot of stuff in here. We didn't bring boiling water. Damn you, fire department. Okay, so. You have space to roll in there? Yes, you yeah. do. So we'll make mm -hmm. we'll make the space. Sure. So roll it. Roll it long. Now for this one you might have to use here the wooden cutting board. Because what I'm gonna try to make today is orecchiette, which means means mean small ears. Now when you go down to um, Napoli or of Bari or Calabria, uh, you're gonna see grandmas making orecchiette. They can make a hundred orecchiettes in one second. Me? <laughs> I usually buy them, it's easier. So orecchiette usually is made with, you're just gonna drag the dough. Oh, look at there. And it's a very fine. It's like the gnocchi mm. shape only. It's like the gnocchi thin. shape, but it's gonna look like ears. Okay. So. Here, why don't you use this one? Try it. You can drag this one like that. Uh -huh. And it's almost uh -huh. like a cavatelli. Here, try a couple. Okay. Now, I had, oh my God, we're running. Why the way we have fun here? We're always running out of time. Now, I've seen grandmas doing it with a dull knife. Okay. That's what this kind of is, right? Eh, that's a bench scraper. I know, but in, at the heart of the matter. Here, try to do it with the back of this knife. Do what? Like this? Yeah, cut it, and now mm -hmm. drag it like this. towards you. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So I can be a grandma now, is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, wait, relax. Your daughter is just <laughs> like what? 14. 14? No, <laughs> not yet. Let us live life a little bit. I can hear the watch already going. That. How much time do we have? Two minutes, Two minutes, that's it? Okay, fine. It's like, which camera are we? One, two. Okay, so orecchiette, look at that, beautiful. Uh -huh. Now, the orecchiette, they come better when you use semolina flour, and there are so many other shapes that you can make. Just be creative with your pasta, it's fun. Uh, if you're a restaurant operator, it's really easy to make pasta in your, in your uh, restaurant, and the profits can be higher. Uh, you're making stuff fresh and, and, uh, and by hand. So. Uh, Send me, shoot me an email if you, need, if you have any questions. Uh, next week, we're gonna talk about ravioli and dumplings. Ravioli, oh, is it cheese ravioli? No, it's a whole planet of stuff past and what you can do with it. Uh, so tune with us next week. Matt won't be here. <laughs> I'm sorry, she's back into her little beautiful mountains up there, but hopefully you'll be back soon. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, shoot us, shoot us an email, leave some comments on the Facebook feed. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you have some fun because we did. And now we need yeah. to take this to the kitchen and start cooking it because I'm hungry. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is Chef Carlo talking food with beautiful mats here today, uh, making me company and making sure that I stay straight. And I'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>